a lot of us are ridiculously busy. Personally, I work full-time in civil engineering. I have exams for professional certifications to study for. I do this whole YouTube thing as a side hustle. I try to maintain good relationships with my friends and family, and I still want to be putting out music that I am genuinely proud of on a at least semi-regular basis. I'm guessing a lot of you are in the same boat, so here's some stuff that has helped me out at least. The first thing is seemingly contradictory. Optimize your setup, but stop chasing optimal workflow. Let me explain. What I have found to be helpful is making my music production setup more efficient. Now, this is where a lot of videos about how to productively do creative stuff when you're busy, like start and stop. So we're going to blitz through this and then I want to get a bit deeper, but I have found it genuinely helpful to try to make my workspace and setup as efficient as possible. Stuff like things being in easy reach. The machine Mark III just kind of lives on my desk, at least at the moment. I have my headphones phones and MIDI controller keyboard right here within easy reach as well. I have plugins in a favorites folder that I can get to very quickly. I am very familiar with using search functions to get what I want quickly. I often harvest samples and presets from previous songs that worked out well, so I can use them in future songs and eventually build up a library of really good sounds that work well for what I want easily accessible. That's kind of where the sample packs came from with sounds I've made more or less from scratch. And because I am lucky enough to be able to afford it, I've gone for tools that will help save me a bit of time. Things like Ozone for mastering, or I know which devices back there to reach for if I want to uh, squeeze in some real musical productivity in not a lot of time. And of course, you can take this even farther. I've seen some producers who have full templates that have a bunch of their signal chains and such already loaded in. I've seen hardware heads set up patch bays or put their synths on stands around their desk. Um, you can take this pretty far. And I think to a degree, doing some optimization is great, but here's what we need to avoid is optimizing just for the sake of it, or optimizing actually holding us back from working on music. I think it's easy to sometimes assume, hey, I need to make sure my setup is totally good to go before I start working on music. And if you do that, you're never going to work on music. And so for me, I've even had cases where I wanted to like spend a couple of hours with like a really kind of pure session working on a single song that I already have in my head on a single music production device. And in between me planning to do that and still not getting around to it, I've made whole other songs in the least optimal of circumstances. Things like writing an entire song in my head while driving. or doodling out an idea on one of my portable groove boxes on a friend's couch with one earbud in. or sitting down at my dot just at my laptop and manually clicking in notes just to get an idea out of my head. And then eventually over the course of an unexpectedly late night, having a really creative session, spitting out, I think a pretty good track. This one's a little cheesy, but damn it, I'm proud of it. Here's the point that I'm trying to get to long, focused, unbroken concentration sessions where you dive super deep into a, uh, making a song are great. And I think even to a degree necessary for a fulfilling and productive, creative workflow. But I think we shouldn't rely on them or shouldn't wait for them. I have been consistently surprised at just how much musical productivity I can get done, how much progress I can make on songs by choosing to reject optimal sessions and just work on music in the in-between periods. 
if I notice that I have a pocket of time and enough energy ahead of me, I'm like, okay, let's just take this half an hour to two hours and work on music. Planning ahead for deep creative sessions is nice, but most of the time, a lot of our lives are too chaotic for that. And so I would much rather just take advantage of little opportunities for creativity when I find them. Now, this can occasionally go too far because sometimes you might feel like you're pushing yourself to fill every waking moment with hustle and productivity. I want to be very clear. That's not what I'm trying to get at. What I am trying to get at is making music is fun. If you are into making music, it's probably because you find it fun and creatively fulfilling. And so personally, I'm like, I will do whatever it takes, even if it's not optimal. And I'll even bargain with myself. Like there was one time where I was working on a track that I did a video on recently that has a couple things that can teach us actually. But the first thing is I was really exhausted one evening and I was actually thinking like, okay, either I just go to bed early and have enough energy for tomorrow if I'm really that drained, or maybe I just do something anything. Even if it's like a single step to work on this song, it'll at least be like, okay, I got something done. And if I do that long enough, I can consistently make progress, even if it feels really slow in the moment. So I was like, okay, what's the most brain dead thing I could possibly do that I was like, I don't have to think about it. I could even be like watching a YouTube video while doing this. I'll just record the MC 101 tracks into my DAW and call it a day. But then once I did that, I was like, hey, I may as well structure the song out. And before I knew it, I had spent all evening structuring the song and doing a first pass mix. And you know what? It was really nice. I was like texting on Discord back and forth with one of my other music producer friends. And so there was a bit of like human connection there. And I was just getting lost in this song. I was working on making it sound pretty, taking the listener on a journey. And it was really nice. And I'm consistently surprised at how often that happens where it's like, okay, I'll do the minimum viable thing because I'm too tired to do anything else. And eventually it actually ends up being not only creative and productive, but energizing. The other thing that that song can demonstrate is that music production sessions can be really, really piecemeal and sometimes even feel like failures until they're not. So in the case of this song, it started life on uh, my Roland MC 101, a portable groove box in a cafe in about a half an hour, I just doodled out a little idea that I was like coming up with on the spot and thought it was kind of bad and wasn't going to go anywhere. So I shelved it, didn't think about it for like two weeks and then eventually came back to it and went, I hear something in this that I didn't hear before. So I started building on that idea just while sitting on the couch and had something to work with that I was like, okay, I can export these tracks and actually make something pretty dope here. And then ended up mixing them in another session that took place in a bunch of piecemeal sessions. And I still need at the time of filming this to get like a finished mix and master done. And I think as non optimal as it is, and as much as it feels like maybe we as creatives shouldn't have to do this, I think it can be good to kind of assembly line and break apart your music production process. So maybe one session is just dedicated to coming up with ideas. The next one is fleshing out whichever of those ideas floats to the top. The next one is like structuring a song. The next one's mixing. The next one is adding ear candy and getting like a final mix and master going something like that. And it can be even more chaotic than that. And since we're creatives, it probably will be. But the point is reject optimization, embrace chaos, embrace little chunks of time and energy whenever you can get them. I should also mention this applies to more creative pursuits than just music. For instance, for me, YouTube, I wrote part of this video on the toilet in my notes app and wrote other parts of this video by hand in a cafe after my laptop died. I have worked on YouTube thumbnails in Discord calls between rounds of video games. That's a little bit insane, but I like working on this stuff. And so I will take the time I can get, damn it. This jump on any time and energy you can possibly get approach also applies to song ideas, by the way. I have the rule for myself that I will capture any idea I have, even if the only way to do so is sing it into my phone. I have snuck away to the work bathroom to do this. I've done this in bed while trying to fall asleep when I got an idea. I'll do this no matter how dumb the idea is because worst case scenario, it was like a waste of a minute. And best case scenario, I have preserved an idea that's actually worth developing. And this might be a bit of a cope, but 
I don't think that my musical output would be as good or at least feel as inspiring if I wasn't uh, working piecemeal like this because most of my life is out there in the world being a person. I'm not trying to sit at a computer all day and grind out musical ideas. And so I feel like the amount of music I listen to, which is a lot, all the freaking time and being out there in the world makes me more likely to work on music in my head in the background or at least have ideas for stuff I want to try once I finally sit down with some music production hardware or software. This all does assume though a kind of baseline level of music production knowledge and I remember what it was like when I had like finals coming up and I was still trying to get my head around the basics of music production and just how overwhelming that feels. That will take some time away from actually making songs and you'll probably have to just try to be ruthlessly targeted with your learning. Pro tip, big ticket stuff that will really make a big difference over time are songwriting and mixing. I think those will give you a lot of bang for your buck if you can get those under your belt. For the rest of things like sound design and sound selection, you can use samples, you can use presets and then slowly incorporate more stuff over time. Plus, I do think that the use whatever time and energy you can have approach does come in handy if you're just trying to incrementally learn stuff. I also try to embrace what I've heard called just in time learning, where I will throw myself into a project and then find myself getting stuck, use a tutorial or a manual to get unstuck and then just keep going. When I was learning FL Studio, when I first got into music production, when I was learning Photoshop, when I've learned pretty much most of the software that I know other than CAD, which I took a class for, when I was learning most of that stuff, that's how I got into it. I would dive in with very little plan and very little background knowledge and then get myself unstuck as I went. Maybe that's less efficient, but at least you're actually getting some stuff done in the process. And I have weird gaps in my music production knowledge that I'm still annoyed about and that I still need to go fill, but damn it, I've released music I'm proud of, so who cares? I care a little bit, but I think it was worthwhile. Plus, I'll hack this a little bit by forcing myself to incorporate a new tool or technique or piece of knowledge into the next song that I make. That way I am doing productive music production that'll hopefully lead to a final product while learning something new. And so that like double counts my time a bit and ultimately learning by doing is often more effective than learning by watching a tutorial anyway. But I will say I've watched tutorials on the toilet or while doing basic chores. I've listened to tutorials while doing other things. If you're determined, you can make it work. But I do want to be very clear here. This is not to A, shame anyone who doesn't spend as much time as they'd like on this stuff. And B, this is not to imply that I'm some sort of productivity superhuman. I slack off quite a bit. And I actually feel lately in the past year and a half or so that I've been more tired and drained than I think I ever remember being. I don't even fully know why. I feel like I've just been driving myself into the ground. In that case, Taking time to be creative, even if it's short, even if it's disconnected, even if it's piecemeal, actually feels like an oasis in overwhelm. I finally get to be creative, even if it's only for five to 30 minutes. And the beauty of being an electronic musician is that that stuff's not gonna go anywhere and there have been a lot of developments to make it more efficient. You know, if you have a laptop in your backpack, you can work for five minutes on a tune on a lunch break. You can get high quality sounding results faster than producers could 20 years ago. And so I think uh, the start to finish process of making a full song, as long as the idea is good and as long as you are somewhat ruthlessly efficient with it, the start to finish process can be a lot quicker than a lot of people think in sheer time spent, even if it's broken up over two weeks. And if you are at least semi consistent with jumping on little windows of time, you'd be surprised at how much that compounds. Like I probably get in one to two little music production sessions a week, and that will vary wildly. Sometimes I am really slammed, and so it's zero. And then sometimes I have more time and energy and more creative fuel in the tank, so to speak. And so I will spend hours that week working on music. Keeping an eye out on your time and energy and going, hey, I think I could work on some music right now. And trying to train your brain to notice those opportunities and go, 
that sounds like a nice time. Let's at least do something. That done semi-consistently gave me a lot more progress in my music production journey and my music production output than I ever would have thought. One more thing I do want to mention, and that is what I'm going to somewhat jokingly call embrace self-hatred. And what I don't mean by that is um, I feel like a lazy piece of trash and so I might as well be productive. Although sometimes I use that as motivation. It's a fuel that burns dirty, but sometimes I find it useful, although it's not particularly healthy. What I actually mean by this is embrace processes that feel like they suck. For the most part, I've talked about music production as being an oasis, a way to uh, creatively express yourself and then hopefully come out the other side with something cool that you want to show to the world. But I think embracing self-hatred can be helpful. So my main example here is using reference tracks. There is no faster way for me to hate myself and question why I even got into this whole music production thing than using a reference track. I like think I have a mix and master that sounds okay and then I reference it to something by a pro and I'm like, why am I even bothering? I freaking suck compared to these people and this is awful and how the hell am I going to fill this massive chasm between me and the pros? But then I'll start thinking about how to answer that question. What are they doing differently? Uh, it wakes my ears up to go, okay, they're using way more high end in this instrument and more than I would have thought or more low end than I would have thought here. And this sounds super compressed or this doesn't sound super compressed. I can start to be more analytical, separate myself from that immediate uh, sinking feeling of, oh, my thing is so much worse than the pros. And I can start to try to bridge that gap and having that reference track there, having something that's somewhat objective that you think sounds good as a target to work towards and doing a lot of a being maybe even with multiple listening systems or pairs of headphones gets you to a polished result a lot quicker than if you were just going at it without using a reference track. It sucks. I hate doing it. I procrastinate on doing it. And it uh, feels like a grind. There's always that point where I just want to give up entirely and then I'll take a break, step back, come back later and hopefully make better progress. It's incredibly useful and I highly recommend you do it. It will get you to where you want to be more efficiently, just with more pain. And if you do have some disposable income, I think there's no shame in, say, paying someone to put the final mixing touches and mastering touches on something that you've got 90% of the way there, but you just need another pair of ears and maybe someone with more specific skills than you to take it the rest of the way there. Not everyone can afford to do that, but if you can, I think there's no shame in doing that. I am by no means a productivity expert, but it is a topic I find interesting, especially as a chronically overwhelmed and busy person. I've done some more videos on it up over here if you want to check those out. Hopefully they're at least sort of helpful. It's stuff that has at least on and off helped me sometimes. Uh, I'll be back with a new video in a little bit. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching.